Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Also check out the comment section below where I use it for just additional information, updates, changes, or potentially it might even have some links in there. So be sure to check it out. This speaker I'm excited about. This is the Focal Cora 826. I'm gonna briefly go over the specifications, but first what I wanna do is I wanna just kinda of say that if I was explaining this speaker to somebody in a few words, take these off, I would say that it is very clear. It has great instrument separation, thin on bass. The Cora 826 is a three-way bass reflex floor standing loudspeaker. It has two six inch slate fiber woofers and the mid-range which is right over here is also slate fiber. The tweeter is a inverted dome tweeter and they call it a TNF. Then there's looks like AI slash MG next to it or AL slash MG. Print is very light. Um, sensitivity is 91 decibels and it definitely shows it because when I hooked this up, I had to make this speaker, I had to make the speaker lower than the other speaker that was previously hooked up, which was right over there, the Bowers and Wilkins. So, which I believe is rated at 87 or 88 or something like that. So it's definitely, it, it definitely plays louder. The nominal impedance is 8 ohms, and the minimum impedance is 2.9 ohms. The recommended amplifier power is rated at a minimum suggested of 40 watts and a maximum of 250. So with that said, I would definitely like to listen to this speaker with a higher powered amplifier. Um, I'm only able to give it the 120 watts that the Ankyo RZ840 has, but I would like to hear this with an amp that's maybe 150, 200 watts, or maybe even pushing the full 250 that they mention over here, just to see if it um, sounds any better. I'm going to get to the sound, of course. The frequency response is rated at 48 hertz to 28 kilohertz and the low frequency point is at 39 hertz but at minus six decibels so the frequency response was plus or minus three decibels and the low frequency point is 39 hertz with minus six decibels the crossover frequency here is 270 hertz and 2.7 kilohertz so 270 hertz is going to be from the mid-range down the crossover is going to send everything from 270 hertz down and from the two point what i say 2.7 kilohertz up is going to go to the tweeter and you could also look at it this way everything from 2.7 kilohertz down is going to go to this mid-range and then everything from the 270 hertz below this below the mid-range is going to go to these woofers the speaker weighs 46.6 pounds. I didn't have any problems moving this around. It's, it's, it's a relatively light speaker overall. But of course, if you have issues with your back, it might not be so light to you. Uh, I do have issues with my back as well, so I, you know, I am careful moving this. When this is packed in the box, it is 52.9 pounds. So just you know, keep that in mind that you know, it's almost 53 pounds when it shows up. It's always a good idea to have help, especially if you do have some kind of a, a back injury. Also in the book, they do give you a little example of how to set the speaker up and position it. So the book shows you in relation to the wall as far as where to put it for the least bass, the most bass. It has these little check boxes over here. Um, it's kind of interesting, the suggested location for the speaker and I say that because and I'm going to get into it more uh, this speaker needs a lot of help with the bass 
or should I say, especially at the wattage that I threw at it. So again, I would like to see this played with a much um, more powerful amp than what I was able to feed it. Okay, so this speaker normally, it has this, it has this stand over here that you could put it on, and you probably should put it on. You just screw it into the stand. It's angled, so when it's on the stand, it's going to be something like this. So you see I'm able to pick this up, not too much problem there. Um, you know, so it's going to be angled like this. It's going to be angled, and the idea is so that the sound shoots up and it goes more towards ear level. With that said, I don't have it on the stand because I felt like having it on the stand was reducing the bass even more. And I guess it just makes sense because, let's face it, the stand is pushing it up higher and it's also sending everything up this way. So the port is going this way, the woofers, everything's going this way, rather than going this way where it can use the floor or potentially the walls more. Okay, so I'm going to take this back off this little stand and move this. Now the back of the speaker only has one set of the binding posts. Binding posts feel pretty good. They have like a, like a plastic over here on the outside of them, so it's kind of nice. The binding posts feel okay. They feel pretty strong, pretty decent. The outside just looks like the typical, like, a vinyl, you know, exterior. Um, I mean, I don't think it's really going to win any awards. It looks, you know, it looks kind of like a lot of speakers do, like this, where they have this type of, like, a wood type of vinyl-looking exterior. Um, this is kind of nice. I kind of like the color of this. It, it is gray. Uh, you know, in this house, in this house, everything is gray. The walls are gray. The floors are gray. So, you know, it, it might not be the best choice. It does stand out, though, because it's a much darker gray. I think that I would appreciate more so they have one that's called, like, light wood or something like, like that, that type of color. I do like the color of the woofers as well. I think that, the, I think that it looks really nice. And um, this tweeter also looks really nice. And this, this tweeter is actually, it actually has, like, its own grill to keep it safe. So if you actually put the speaker grill on here, the speaker grill just goes like this. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't think I would use a speaker grill with this speaker just because it does look so nice. So, you know, that's the reason why it's packed away. Anyway, it's time for my notes. This speaker is a very good sounding speaker overall. Um, I do appreciate the sound of it. It's very clear. It's very detailed. The instruments really come through nicely on this. And what I'm really saying is the instruments that are probably like well over the 70 hertz and up range. So 70 hertz and up. I believe those instruments really sound excellent. Anything that's requiring underneath that, a sub should be added. Unless if maybe with an amplifier that's much more powerful, maybe even a lot warmer sounding, maybe that helps the lower frequency response because I feel like this speaker is just, it's clear and sometimes the tweeter can be bright, okay? The mid-range sounds excellent. Mid-range is really fantastic on this. Um, bass, it's lacking, it's lacking. So sound separation, clarity. That to me, that is the reason for purchasing this speaker. It also projects the sound very evenly out of this. It's very strange when I listen to it. I don't feel like I don't feel like sound is coming from say here or just here. I feel like the sound is just very evenly coming out of this thing. So it sounds larger than what it is. 
And again, you know, the instruments really sound excellent. The vocals sound excellent. The instruments sound ex excellent. I don't have any issues with that. Um, and, you know, it, it, it absolutely needs a sub. What's next? Um, there are some parts of songs that get a little bit louder. And I noticed over the years when sometimes, especially the music that I listen to, when you're listening to heavy rock or heavy rock metal, whatever you want to call it, when the sound would get more aggressive or it would kind of peak a little bit, a lot of times speakers would kind of sound like they fold or they kind of cave in. It's like they can't handle, like if the, if the sound was like doing one thing and then it went like bang, 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 that speaker would like almost sound lower than it should. This speaker seems to handle that and still put a lot, uh, still put a lot of life into that sound. So, you know, it's not, it's not quite the same as a lot of other speakers that I've listened to over the years. I was actually kind of surprised at that. I was listening to various, um, you know, tracks and I was like, wow, like it's, it, it still sounds strong here where I'm waiting for it to kind of just, you know, like dip in volume a bit, you know, instead of the volume increasing or, or kind of keeping stable when like the drums are really being banged on or something like that. So big sound, this, this speaker definitely has sound that's a lot larger than the size speaker. And especially if you use this stand, if you use the stand and you angle it upward, it, it, you know, it does sound even more spacious. So it's nice that they have the stand like that. So there's a Breakin' Benjamin song from the Aurora album. It's a acoustic album where there's a lot of remakes of their old songs. And I believe there's some songs that, are, that might also be new on there as well. I haven't really fully looked into it. I do listen to the album kind of often. Anyway, the song is called Far Away. It has Scooter Wood as well from the band Cold. So the difference in, in, the, in the voices between Scooter and Benjamin on other speakers, I noticed that it was kind of hard to tell them apart, and especially when they're both singing at times. Now, I know Scooter's voice is a little bit deeper, definitely more raspy sounding um, than uh, Benjamin's voice. His voice on most of it is a little bit higher sounding, a little bit lighter sounding. This speaker really separated both of those voices. I mean, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe how good the song sounds. So, you know, I think that that really says a lot about this speaker. Also listening to a song like that, uh, the song, uh, actually the album, it's, it's very acoustic. And this speaker really just, it really just makes all the instruments just shine right through. I, you know, I never felt like, 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 oh, like, you know, everything sounded dull or, or everything sounded cramped. Just everything just really came through just, just really spacious, really nice sounding. Vocals were very pleasant. Um, I mean, I really, I really can't say enough good things about this speaker. If, if the goal is for uh, just a very clear speaker, a very uh, a detailed sounding speaker, but you know, it can be, it can be a little bit, at least with, with uh, the Ankyo, uh, you know, it can be a bit bright at times. So I'm going to get to that. There's three bands that I enjoy. And typically for me to keep a speaker, these three bands, their recordings have to sound pleasant to me. So, you know, I've come to realize that those recordings are more kind of bright sounding on the end of the, say, the cymbals and the hi-hat. Okay, the cymbals and, and the hi-hat, um, you know, on the drums. The recording can really shimmer. You could really hear the, the shimmering sound of those cymbals, of, of the hi-hats. Um, and with some speakers, I feel like, 
you know, the shimmering just never ends. So it's almost like I'm listening to this recording and it's that sh 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 that shimmering sound just keeps on going. And, you know, it's kind of unfortunate, you know, that's the recording, but some speakers really enhance that. Those three bands, Slipknot, Pantera, Five Finger Death Punch. Okay, and I've just noticed that in, in a lot of their recordings. Three bands, again, that I really enjoy, and I always want, you know, those recordings, they don't have to sound the best, but I want to be able to listen to it. With, with the focal, those recordings can be sharper than I would like, okay? Sharper than I would like, because part of the problem with this speaker is, and it's typical, a lot of manufacturers are making these big tweeters with little baby woofers. So this tweeter, while it does sound excellent with just like a ton of music that I threw at it, it sounds great. I mean, it really sounds fantastic. Clarity, very good. Um, this tweeter, at least, you know, having it hooked up to the Ankyo, maybe if, maybe if it was on some amp that's very warm sounding, very laid back sounding amp, maybe this would really sound fantastic. But, you know, these six and a halves are just too small for this tweeter. You know, that's, that's just, you know, that's really as, as, as simple as I see it. Just too small for this tweeter. I think these should be eight inch. I mean, if these were 10, it would be golden. But, you know, that's the way the speaker is uh, designed. It's obviously small. Where should this speaker be placed? I think placing this speaker preferably in a room which has all carpeting, um, a lot of furniture to soak up the sound. And I'm not talking about furniture that's like made out of wood. I'm talking about, you know, a very large couch, a sectional couch, different things in that room to really help to soak up a little bit of that brightness that it has. Um, it's, it's definitely not the most, you know, bright sounding tweeter that I've ever heard. It's actually pretty good. And, you know, I, and, I, and, you know, I'm not saying at all, you know, don't purchase this speaker because I think that this speaker is definitely, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth trying it out in your home with your equipment, with your amplifier, with your room acoustics, with your hearing, because for all of us, it's going to be different. Okay. So, you know, just keep that in mind, give it a try because it definitely brings a lot of life to recordings and it does, it does sound, it does sound excellent, but definitely consider having some kind of a sub because that lower end, that lower bass, it's just not there. This to me, and I put in a test CD and it just needs a lot of help. Okay. Now I'm going to point out something else with it. Actually, I'm going to put it up on the screen. Let me do that right now. Put it on the TV. Okay. On the screen, I have this kind of crazy looking equalizer pattern going. Now, the reason why it looks like this is I was trying to get the speaker to sound better, but especially for some of those bands where, you know, the tweeter was sounding a bit strong and also trying to get some bass out of it. So I boosted up the 25 Hertz that the equalizer setting allows, which is probably just a waste. And I'm probably just putting like a little bit of extra, um, stress on the amp because the speaker really can't go that low at all. But then it also has 40 Hertz and it has 63 Hertz. Now the 40 Hertz is set up six decibels. When I boosted it up six decibels in the bass, the uh, 40 Hertz, the sound was still good. The sound sound was still clear. The instruments still had that separation. Okay. The problem starts to arise when I come over here to the 63 Hertz. So somewhere over here and whatever that was at. Okay. So three decibels, anything more than like a three decibel boost over here. 
and I found that coming over, uh, coming over here to 100 hertz just makes the speaker start, uh, start to sound muddy. So really, really anything more than boosting up the 63 hertz, 3 decibels, and boosting up the 40 hertz, 6 decibels, is going to start to make the speaker sound muddy. So that's not good. The speaker is going to lose that really nice separation and clarity that it has. When I come over here, up, up on the higher end, this pretty much made the speaker sound a little bit more calm. But I'm noticing that with a lot of these tweeters these days, the equalizer really isn't going to change the emphasis that the speaker might have on certain you know, recordings or instruments. So again, in that case, you know, the cymbals, the hi-hats, that, um, that type of a sizzle. Or, or just that type of like a lag, that continuous shimmering sound that's going on because these cymbals are being hit a lot and by the time it's finished, you know, you know sizzling or, or you know, shimmering, um, the cymbals being hit again. So it did help though to kind of balance out the speaker a little bit more and this little, this little crazy pattern down here really isn't very much. It's only... Um, a minus one at two and a half kilohertz, a minus one at four, then I went minus two at six and a half, or 6.3, um, minus one and a half at 10 kilohertz, and minus one and a half at 16. I was just trying to cool it off a bit because I know that the frequency response of you know, hi-hats and cymbals can go up to 16 or, or, or something like that, so they can go pretty high. So again, just you know, you know, trying to just calm it down. So that's really the point. So hopefully this makes some sense. The other reason why I am you know, showing you this is because if you're considering purchasing this speaker and then just you know, taking the equalizer and just you know, boosting it up through the roof, it's gonna ruin the sound of the speaker. This speaker doesn't do very well with the equalizer. And the same thing with that one right over there, the Bowers, which that's a separate review. But, you know, really this speaker, you pretty much want to leave it pretty close to flat. So kind of have everything set to zero and just purchase a sub. That's my opinion of this. And then you'll get the best clarity, the best detail, uh, you know, from pretty much everything that you listen to. So here's a few final thoughts for this. I think this speaker is a great speaker for probably all kinds of music, but it's not a great speaker if the idea is to not use a sub. Because all of the lower bass frequencies that are going to be missing or, or lacking is just going to be too much. For music, you want to have it at least strong down to 50 hertz. And this speaker is not strong down to 50 hertz. I put in a test CD, and the test CD is somewhere around 70 hertz or so, or something like that. So 80 hertz was still was kind of decent, but then 63 was when the volume started to, you know, started to drop. Using the EQ like that, then, the 63 hertz was still kind of very usable, okay, very um, audible. Anything, anything less than that, you know, what's on the EQ, you know, all those lower frequencies are going to be lacking. And for music, you really want to have a speaker that's pretty solid, pretty strong down to 50 hertz or so, especially for those kick drums and potentially uh, the bass guitar, you know, those lower, um, uh, you know, sounding notes. So just keep that in mind. I also think that this speaker for movies, I think it's a nice sounding speaker for movies as well. Again, it is very clear. It's not, you know, it's not a very tall speaker, so, you know, you might be losing it a bit, but the good thing is that it does have this stand, and with this stand, it will take the sound and angle it up. If you are going to set this up for movies, you know, definitely 
set this, I would say set this to small and set your crossover around 60 hertz. Now that I said that, I'm not a fan of setting the main speakers to small because when those main speakers are set to small, every speaker in the system has to be set to small. And I enjoy having a subwoofer attached to the surround backs, connected to the surround backs um, through the speaker wire, and that just adds a lot of depth. I like to have you know, as many speakers functioning larger as possible. So you might want to purchase a sub that has the speaker level, the line level speaker connectors where you hook it up to the sub through, it, through the input and then send the speaker wire to the speakers and set the knob on the sub as a crossover. The other option would be to keep this speaker set to large and give each speaker its own sub. So put a speaker, you know, like put a sub kind of next to it, like right next to it would be a sub, right next to the other speaker would be a sub, and use the left and right preamp outputs on the receiver, and then just set the uh, filter knob on the subwoofer to filter out, uh, you know, frequencies above, you know, the 60 hertz, maybe 70 hertz range, so something like that. That is really the, you know, the best advice that I could offer with this speaker. So, you know, again, you know, a room that has carpeting, I think that this speaker, you know, sounds the best in, you know, in, you know, in that type of room. I'm sure that this video was a long video and I probably talked way more than I wanted to, but I hope that you got something out of it. If you have any questions, please post them below in the questions and comments section. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.